In January and February this year, we spent six weeks as a church looking at our vision and our values. We spent six weeks looking at seven words. Son, Father, Spirit, Grace, Community, Kingdom and Love. Now, of course, the vision and values of a church, indeed of any community, cannot be limited to seven words and takes far more than six weeks to discuss and digest and develop. Culture, which is the fruit of an organization's vision and values, takes years to establish and will evolve over time. However, One of the ways that we build a culture is to keep reminding ourselves of our vision and our values, our key principles. It has been said by by strategic gurus that you need to be able to articulate your vision in 30 minutes, 3 minutes and 30 seconds. Well, here's a 9 minute summary of our vision and values. It all starts with God. We start with God because that's where the Bible starts. In fact, that's where everything starts. In the beginning, God, we read. God's creation, flowing out of God's creative character. God exists in creative community. Father, Son and Holy Spirit in perfect unity. The universe is created out of the words that express their relationship as those words pour out into time and space. And our discovery of God starts with the Son, starts with Jesus. We fix our eyes on Jesus because in his incarnation, God perfectly reveals himself to his world. The Word became flesh and opened a door through which we can walk to find relationship with the Creator of the universe. Jesus reveals to us the heart of the Father. We are taught to pray, Abba, Father, Daddy. In Jesus, in his relationship with the Father and his teaching about the Father, we discover that the Creator of the universe seeks us out and runs to us on the road as we respond to his love. We discover afresh in the incarnation that we are called to be a people of the presence of God. The Son dwelt amongst us for a season and is gathered up to the Father not to limit his presence amongst us, but to release his presence amongst us through the person of the Holy Spirit. Relationship with the Father is made possible through the Son and becomes a daily lived out reality through the presence of the Holy Spirit. How is all this possible? How does a holy, perfect God abide with a broken people in a broken world? Well, it's all about his grace. It is by grace we have been saved, not by works, so that no one can boast. It is all the grace of God, the overflowing, unmerited, unlooked for favor of God towards his children. We are a charismatic people because our foundation is the charis, the grace of God. A people saved by grace and abiding with the Holy Spirit will naturally pursue the gifts of grace, the charismata, the presence of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit breaking out in our meetings and our lives. And grace is not individualistic or isolated. God's grace is incredibly personal. The Father knows you and me personally. He knows the hairs on our heads. But as God is community, we are created out of and for community. Our vision and value series was very deliberately called Who We Are and Why We Are Here. 
because we are called to be a grace-filled community. A grace-filled community that is established and built on the foundation of grace, which means we have grace for one another. We have grace for those around us. As God has treated us with grace, we treat one another with grace. We do not judge or criticize or pick apart. As God's grace is poured out onto us, we do all we can to let that grace flow out to those around us. We forgive and serve one another as we have been forgiven and served by a God perfectly revealed in a Son who came to serve, not to be served, and who forgave the very people who held nails in their hands. Such grace and forgiveness will in time bear the fruit of authentic and genuine community where we can be who we really are with one another. We have been called into a community and a community with a kingdom purpose. God's eternal vision is that his benevolent rule and reign would exist throughout all of creation. And scripture calls this the kingdom of God. God's heart is that the intimacy of relationship and perfect justice that we see in the early chapters of the Bible in the Garden of Eden would be seen throughout the whole of the planet. A kingdom of relationship, holiness, wholeness and justice. A kingdom of salvation, sanctification, signs and wonders and social action. Nor is this kingdom meant to stay encased in the walls of a building or the boundaries of religious activity. In God's kingdom, there is no sacred, secular divide. God cares about every aspect of our lives, from the mundane to the miraculous. Our vision is incarnational. Wherever we are, we carry the grace of God and the power and calling of the kingdom of God. We do not go to church. We are the church. We are the body of Christ. And wherever we find ourselves, we are called to seek the kingdom of God because the Father is always at work. The Father is always at the, on the work of his kingdom and is see, keen to see that kingdom break out, not just in our worship meetings, but in our workplaces, our homes, our neighborhoods, wherever we find ourselves. As part of our kingdom calling, we are called to make disciples. Because discipleship and all the spiritual disciplines that characterize a disciple's lifestyle are God's strategy for fulfilling his vision of the kingdom. Spiritual disciplines like prayer, worship, fasting, tithing, serving one another are the outworking of our relationship and also the place where God builds our relationship with him. We work those disciplines out when we gather in our Sunday services, in our life groups, and when we spend time on our own in devotion to God. In this way, we fulfill the biblical principles of temple courts and house to house and personal relationship. Discipleship is God's strategy for fulfilling his kingdom. But this kingdom is unfulfilled. The kingdom is now, it is at hand, but it is also not yet. That means that though we are totally secure in our salvation, we are still imperfect. And our imperfection at times will bounce up against another's imperfection and will cause pain and disappointment. And therefore, we have got to seek the love of God, the agape love of God, the love found in Jesus that forgives all that has gone before and all that is to come. A grace community is not defined by uniformity or unthinking obedience but rather a grace community is characterized by individuals choosing to love one another 
through and despite their imperfections. This is our vision. These are our values. To be a genuine, authentic community to go together, focused around the Son and the Father and the Spirit, committed to grace and community, seeking the kingdom and covered by the agape love of God. This is who we are and why we are here. It is a statement, not a question. We walk into the identity won for us on the cross of Jesus and hardwired into us as a people created in the image of God. Our kingdom activity flows out of our kingdom identity. We are an ordinary people being transformed by an extraordinary God. We are image bearers and kingdom bringers.